So we just wrapped up a uh, nice little dinner there. And thank you for coming out, Matthew, with your lovely girlfriend over there. And she's hanging out in the background. That was it's pretty cool. Like, as as we're sitting down and like taking our spots here on the the build set, did you're such like a you're such a uh, like a equipment like geek like whether it's fishing or this equipment like oh is that the Sure forty five hundred oh look at the cord I mean this, I don't this, know this. that much about it but I mean it's just I mean if you're, you're a in the industry guy. and you do it you want to know because you, you guys been have looking stuff to upgrade well always update? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Jeffries was always. He always had the Jeffries way to do it. Yeah. And I've there's always a so I mean I'm trying to get a, you know updated and stuff on that. Yeah. So uh BTL, I was just thinking like uh so yesterday I knew you were gonna come on and come over and hang out and it's been awesome uh, this afternoon. And um I was thinking like, man, how many times have I been on Bass Talk Live? I know I've been in studio with you guys live once. Yeah. So we're even here. You That's come, when you brought this uh swim bait. Yeah, we yeah, did a little swim bait awesome. thing. That was cool. We learned a lot and then I called in multiple times over the over the years, and uh, I think it's safe to say you you guys, hands down, it's like the OG, like the original, like bass fishing podcast, like hands down, going back to the Bass Zone days. Is BassZone dot com still available? If you were to type it in, right? No, now? it still goes to it, it still goes to Bass Zone. It's just it gets complicated because so Bass Zone was more like the on location coverage yes. and the articles yes. and the news running gun yeah, yeah so then like the on location coverage is kind of obsolete because of the live coverage mm -hmm. so i mean the whole point of that was like we were on location so you could get information that wasn't readily well now you know it's live yep. instantly yeah uh so it still runs through that but i'm actually like in the process of kind of consolidating it all so yeah it's all just like bass talk live now Dude, I love this side of you, and I think a lot of people viewing right now could say the same thing, because normally you're like running a gun, you got this whole list of things to hit and it's questions awkward. to ask. I can tell you're a I'm little, very it's different, right dude. Now. I love yeah. it. I love this side Are you of nervous? you. nervous? Oh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's different. It's also like, so if you're on like other podcasts, mm -hmm. like, I mean, you guys do it a little bit differently Shoot with the, the in-studio. I mean, you're looking at one, two, three, four, four different cameras, different Plus stuff. Plus Charles, I mean, It's yeah. different than... Right. Than just like a live stream where you're in your studio on a different yes. podcast. Well, you're not in control, yeah. right? <laughs> I don't, I mean, I've never thought of it that yeah. way. But that's probably yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. Hey, I brought something for you, like real quick. We're gonna take okay. It, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna kick it off. Okay. I have no idea what's coming in now. Well, no, I, I stuffed this back here before we cooked the steaks. So here's my jersey from 2012, and we we're talking about rookie this. season. Yes, that logo right there on my belly button. Prime real estate bass zone doc. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's the first time I ever brought a prop on to okay. the build podcast. But 2012, right? We were just had this conversation and they didn't know I was gonna pull out this jersey. I mean, so Chris Aldane, the bass patch, all that, a tackle store. I was so stoked to receive free lures in 2012 from that tackle company, a jig company, $150 a month, maybe, maybe top shelf swim baits, like these little custom swim bait things. Fifty dollars a month or something yeah. like that. Yamaha. I, I don't even remember what that was, but free rods, free line, free power poles, and free coverage on BassZone.com <laughs> every month from Mark Jeffries and you and Dave. And that was my 2012 right so, there. So funny. So there's two Bass Zone logos in existence that have the red Z. Wow. So I vividly remember creating that. So Jeffries is, was all about who... It was who, yellow, right? Yes, yeah. it was yellow. But that year, I had made the World Series of Bass TV show. It was oh, on yeah. NBC yep. Sports. That million dollar thing or something? Yeah, I think his name was Joe Habib. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had done like... He was taking a poker twist on bass fishing. Mm -hmm. It ended up being a giant scam. Joe Habib took all this money, never paid... I think Wade Middleton's company for yes. it. Yes. They for paid for it on NBC Sports. It ran up until the last episode. None of the tournaments ever happened, but they had the World Series of Bass and they had the dream. Yeah. So anyway, there were 10 guys that were chosen to do this reality TV show, like the big break in golf. Right, right, right. And I was one of them. And one of the things that I did was I wanted to put carpet graphics on yeah. and I talked Jeffries because I had a red and white ZX190. I talked Jeffries into letting me put a red Z yes. for the carpet graphics. So then when... Uh, when we were talking about doing something with you that year mm -hmm. and with your color scheme and the Yamaha with the 
the blue and the white and the red. Yep. That's why we went with the red Z with you too, because that was the same year that we had just made the red Z. Minor details. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Why'd you... y'all pick Chris? Do you remember? Yeah, well, why was that? Because, uh, well, because you were the, the guy out west. Yep. So back then... There wasn't a lot of national coverage, right. and there was who was it who did the top thirty in the West every year? He would come out with the top Western anglers. Oh yeah, that guy. Oh yeah, um, uh, Kramer. Uh, yeah, Kramer. Uh, G- uh, G- Jim Kramer. Yep, Jim Kramer. Yeah. No, Jim. Not, is it not Jim, Jim Kramer, Kramer Mad Money? Cra- yeah, he is. Yeah. That's CNBC. <laughs> yeah, it's Kramer. No, so, I, but yeah. but one year weren't you number one? Or in the top, you were I number was. one, and it was like a big deal that yes. you were ahead of like Skeet and John Murray and yeah. all that stuff. And it was Good like memory. right then when you were fishing the, uh, it wasn't the Coast, it was the Everstart yep. series, yep. and you were dominating them out National there. National Guard series, yeah. Yeah, the National Guard series out west. Yep. Uh, and then I met you at Fredrum Banis's house. I was fishing a Bass Nation, Oklahoma. That's right. And Freddie, who's still Freddie, like doesn't even check, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, stay at the house. Doesn't matter how many rooms I've. I mean, you got thirty people there. He's like, "Oh yeah, we got plenty of room." And you were parked out there, and I had met you, yep. and I think I'd done an article with you because yep. I was writing six articles a week then. That's kind of how I met you, and we there got was got this into mystique it. too. And and sad to say, dude, like that mystique. And I don't know if it's because I'm like elder statesman now from the West or whatever it is, but. That like Western mystique, like Air, no, no doubt, Amart like started that whole thing. Yeah. But like I feel like when I met you guys from Oklahoma, some of the guys from Oklahoma, oh, what tech cool techniques do you have for me? Like, can we sit down and write an article? This is back when print was like still yep. going strong, or you know, Bastone articles and things. What kind of mystique can we pull out of Zaldane or whatever? And I think that was kind of the trade off at the time. But sadly, now we just got back from the U.S. Open, and you guys covered it, and you guys fished it. Um, like man, that Western mystique. It's like, dude, all the guys out east, like, have back east, have ca- like they've caught up with like the forward facing stuff, yeah. the electronics, and this and that. And now these guys, the Spencer Shuffields, and some of these other guys, are going, you know, from the east when, and showing up out west so and crushing it. All right, guys, here it is, the mother of all giveaways. We've paired up with Battleborn Batteries and Black Rifle Coffee. We want to give you 400 amp hour batteries with Victron chargers and a year's supply of Black Rifle Coffee. All you got to do is click the link below, enter your email address, and follow on Instagram the Battleborn account, Zal Dangerous account, and also the Black Rifle Coffee account. You get plus two entries for each of those. Also, if you subscribe to the Zal Dangerous YouTube channel, bonus points there. And finally, just subscribe to the Black Rifle Coffee company newsletter you also get two entries for that don't forget that link is below you only have till november 8th thank you guys for being a part of our journey both battleborn and black rifle coffee appreciate y'all's business and contribution to the sport of bass fishing so i was thinking after we had that conversation with bertrand i thought about it all more the stuff um that you guys were getting out west were you getting it from japan yeah and now a lot of it. and now everyone's just getting it straight from Japan instead of it coming from the West here? Yeah, I mean, something as simple as a Neko rig. Neko rig. Guys say yeah. Neko. It's really Neko rig. But it came rig. from Japan. Yes. And then you Western guys got it before. Is it that because it. most of the Japanese guys who came land, over they came just, to the West Coast? Yeah. And yeah. And, yeah and it really is. not happening anymore. It's physically closer. Uh, there was There were lots of opportunities out there through those ever starts, through those National Guard tournaments. And now it's just kind of fizzling away. Like you you mentioned earlier, like a, a scam in bass fishing. We're, like we're hearing about scams out, you know, these tournament circuits out there. It's it's kind of a mess. Um, but yeah, wrapping up the U.S. Open mm-hmm. just just uh, last week, it felt good to kind of reconnect with those guys. And yes, a, a guy from out west won that tournament. Didn't uh, you won the co-angler mm-hmm. side of the U.S. Open, huh? In 2018. Yeah. How, yeah. how the heck did you end up out there? Because uh, Mark Jeffries... Uh, was buddies with Billy Egan, Egan yep. and Egan was Love making Billy. a big push to go national, which it's always been national. It's the yeah. U.S. Open yep. with the period after each one, right? Forty-one years. Yep. One bass. I mean, you hear Rick Clun talk about it back in the day, but then Billy was trying to make it go bigger and national because it it was dying for a number of years yes. there. And Billy, I don't think it's enough credit for really it reinvigor. I mean, mm-hmm. really reinvigorating Dude, that I think tournament some stuff. Not to cut you off, but there's some stuff that's going to come out soon. I think that's good. 
That's good. Yeah. But anyway, he was wanting to go national, and that was when Jeffries was the only live stream guy. Yep. Like it wasn't just Streamyard and Go. Like yep. it was Tough Books and that Firewire one. Cable. Oh, no and one even all these heard programs. Of that. Like no, he would yeah. spend hours and hours with this dude in England who was pioneering live stream stuff. And I mean, it oh. was just. I mean, he'd be on the phone with them like hours and hours. Like, hey, and, here's what I want to do. Do you guys have the technology to be able to do this? So when he did, then he took it out there. And then Billy paid him to live stream the weigh-ins and do the U.S. Open show. So then I was always like, man, I, I've always wanted to fish in that tournament. So I just I jumped in as that AAA one year. You had a blast. I know you did. Yeah, a I smile just, I got, on your face. Dude. I got yeah. so lucky. Yeah. You won yeah. a boat? Well. Yeah, no, no, no. I won like $9,000 in cash and then like $5,000 in other stuff. But you were able to use that and kind of trickle along and trickle along and put this portion into the opens and this and that and that. I mean, yeah. right? Did you uh, learn anything? Oh, yeah, everything. Like, I like. I mean, all I knew about Lake Mead was like Clear. Pam and Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> well, I'm serious. Some of the younger guys don't even know what you're talking about. And, like, about. what yeah. I, you know, what I'd heard about. So, yeah. you know, I practiced with Hallman in that tournament and we put in, like, he's like, I'm going old school. I'm going muddy water. So we put in an Overton every single yes. day yeah, as and just as it gets. blasted them. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't realize that there's like one fish per cove. Yep. So, <laughs> it's true. I had never been through the Narrows or anything. So the first day, you know, was canceled because of wind. So this worked out crazy. Like, I literally got the best draw. There were three guys. I don't even know who my third day draw was, but apparently he really sucked. And I had asked some of my friends, and they were like, dude, you got two good draws, and you're screwed on the third day. Sorry, like, this guy never catches them. Then the first day was canceled because of wind. So I just had my last two draws, which were uh, Nick Salvucci and Matt Shura. Oh, yeah. The hookup. Yeah. Yeah. So the first day, Nick Salvucci's like, we're going to the muddy water, we're power fishing, whatever. He could care less who was in the boat behind yep. him. But I just remember that was the first time I'd ever been through the Narrows. Uh, and we did the so whole power pretty. fishing thing. And like... The Narrows are insane, huh? It's nuts. I'd never been through them. And the sun was rising. And uh, my like third cast, I catch a four pounder. Wow. But like this is no joke. So we're in... Uh, I mean, it's dry now. We're in Overton. And where we stop, like Brett Heights, 300 yards one way. Cliff Perch is 300 yards. So awesome. Uh, another way. Aaron Martins is like 200 yards. And I'm like, dude, we're, we're freaking here. In there, yeah. And it's like, dunk. And I'm like, I got one. And he's playing it. He's like, don't let anyone see it. So he nets it. And then he just gives me the net and goes up front. And I'm I'm like, dude, this is a freaking big fish. Mm-hmm. And I don't say anything because, I mean, it's his show. And we put it in the box. And he gets back at the end of the day. He's like, where the hell did this SOB come from? He was, I was like, own. He was like, dude, that was the fifth cast of the day. He's like, awesome. So then the next day, I drew Matt Shura. Yep. And he went to, uh, he went down to the dam. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went into Vegas Wash. Yep. Yeah. Which was 40 foot visibility, drop shot, Ned rig, the whole nine yards. And, uh, He's like super tech. He's been around forever out yep. on the West Coast. Yep. So he Arizona was like guy. living in a van at yeah. the time, uh-huh. I think. I don't know if he's still doing all that, like with the traveling in it and stuff. And uh, I cast a net rig out and I hook a small mouth. And while he's, it's like 14 inch or while he's weighing it, I catch another one and I end up catching a limit in like six casts. And then he's like, cool, we got nine pounds, eight pounds. And then he went around and was drop shot in boulders in 40 foot of water and called up to like 10 and a half and... I ended up winning. So it was like the perfect setup for, you know, I just watched your videos that came out on the US Open and on I think day two you had a you 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 were sitting there and your guy caught like a four and a half yes, five pound small yes. mouth. And so if people not familiar with that US Open, it's it's a shared weight format again. So Matt Shura netting this limit of of smallmouth that you're catching the back Counts of the boat to goes to his bottom line. So it's it's essentially a team tournament but every you get single a, day. Yeah, you get a new person, so it keeps it even. Mm-hmm. You don't yeah. know who you're going to get. It's a random draw. So it was just two days, and it was lucky I ended up winning by a pound. That's so, so awesome. And that's the only time I've been able to go out there because I started fishing. At, I fished the Toyotas the next year, and then the Opens. So but your confidence so. level, though, like what happened to your confidence level? It was it was luck, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, it you was, were convinced it, it, it was luck. It, no, it it really was like you look at those draws because then it blew the second day and the guys in Overton didn't catch him on the right, second day right. and the guys on the first day didn't really catch him. That was the one that Bub Tosh won. Yeah. Uh, the guys that 
caught him in Vegas wash on day two, didn't catch him on day one. So, so it just it just all worked out. That was when he was throwing the donkey rig in Vegas yeah, wash. The right? double fluke rig. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I really think, you know, you were talking about Billy wanting to expand further. I really think that that format now has legs with the forward facing sonar era and ha- struggling. I know you don't you might not like to hear that, but there's a lot of co-anglers who are like, mm, why would I sign up and just not get to do anything while my guy's looking at his live scope looking for yeah. fish? Now, the guys at the front of the boat have a reason for the guy in the back of, bo- of the boat to know what's going on. In like the one bass and the stuff out there that's not like trying to dictate your future. And oh, yeah, right. yeah. You could do okay. it right. As long as you're talking about that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I would not be cool with any yeah. of that stuff in like opens oh, or yeah. qualifying tournaments. Yeah, could you imagine qualifying for a classic? But, uh, the but, fish yeah, you because yeah, because the guy back. behind you. But honestly, we don't need co anglers at all in the opens. Like honestly, yeah, I disagree though too. I think that's an integral part to this to the sport. To, to learning, ha- not even to learning, but I mean, I know that you have GoPros now, and it's you know the original. It brings money into the organization. It allows it allows both Bass and MLF when they're making these contracts to go to the cities and talk about how much money they're bringing in with the co-anglers. Oh, totally. But but on um, a level of of qualifying, right? So my issue with it is, one, some of these guys will have a co-angler who knows what's going on right. and they're clueless, and that co-angler helps them out. Two, being a girl, I would have guys who, if I started catching fish, you would have thought, like, they were going to die when they got back if a girl beat them, and, like, their whole <laughs> demeanor would just like change like it's just like having a co-angler can really affect the outcome and i i I can see yeah no i could see that i guess i'm just so used to it and it's always been that way i mean i guess in a perfect world but Mm -hmm. i've not i mean i've only had like one co-angler in five years of right I, I gotta say something. Just watching you two right here, like you're literally almost the male version of my wife here, and hearing you guys in real life because normally it's through text, you know, <laughs> ar- almost argue or bicker back and forth. You're like brother We're not and sister. Even there yet. I know you're not, but like just seeing this right here and his facial expressions <laughs> are the same facial expressions I see on BTL live when you come up with a point whether it's Jacob Wheeler on the line or DC or any of the MLF, any of the bass guys, whatever. And, and, and something sparks off in her head and she has got to let you know right now and text you. Some of you guys, BTL viewers yeah. know what you're talking. Matt will look down at his phone. It's Trey. Trey I know it's don't Trey. Don't let him off the hook. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and Matt's just kind of like, he kind of gives like the head shake, you know, it's just like, uh, <laughs> what? What? but like, no, seriously. So like we've been doing the podcast thing here for not as long as you. Yeah. You and guys have been killing it. Yeah. It, we're just be. I, I mean, I was legitimately excited. To, like, yeah. we've been trying to work on yeah. doing this from yeah. kind of the beginning when you started, and this actually just worked out this time. But you guys are so, absolutely killing it. So, like, my question is: so, like, there's a lot of podcasts out there right now, right? A lot of guys talk just about fishing and techniques. That's great because articles and videos and things like that aren't as you know they're just kind of losing their steam. They're still there, but like podcasts are the thing. They're popping up everywhere. Like whenever you have a controversial controversial topic or, you know, what's hot, a guy gets caught doing this or doing that, and you have him on BTL like the next day, that Tuesday of that sun, the championship Sunday or whatever, everyone knows like the question that should be asked. Like we want to know, okay, so did you catch that fish twice or did you really catch it outside of the mouth? Like, how hard is it when you're t- talking to that person face to face or through Skype, or whatever, to ask those direct questions? Isn't it hard? Is it hard? Like- it kind of depends. So, I've always been, and this goes back to Jeffries or whatever. Is yeah. You get the you get the person in the arena. You give them the opportunity. You let them say their piece. Yes. It, even if it's not what you want them to say right. or what you hope Expect. they say. That's their opportunity to say it, and then you let the listener and the viewer make their deduction Draw and the their line. reasoning from it. It's not yes. like, listen, there's totally different types of shows. There's opinion shows, there's news shows, there's shows that claim to be biased, there's close shows that claim to be unbiased. Yeah. It's like a really weird right. yep. line. Yep. But what I want to what I want to try to do, and what BTL for the last 19 years has tried to do, is give that 
angler or that person a forum to say their piece and then let the listener or the viewer make their own decisions based That's off. That's awesome. So just like that Bass Zone logo on that jersey right there. Yeah. It's just a forum or a place. Which, I mean, talk. it's really hard to do because you have your own opinions, yep. obviously, and you know if someone's lying, lying like yes. straight up. But I don't feel like it's my job to right. say you're so, lying or to say that's not have true. Have you ever had that moment, though, where you oh, all the time you know that <laughs> Can stuff... we talk about that? <laughs> yeah. Can no, you tell me? But you know it's not... <laughs> That's not my to job you. to say that at that point. It's right. their job to say that. And then you let the fan who I always say we have the most educated fans in the industry. That's the sword that they're dying on right there with what they're saying. And whether you believe it or whether you don't believe it, I don't know a hundred percent for yes. a fact if it's true. It's still my opinion. Yeah. I want to let them say their piece and then let the listener and the viewer decide on sure. whether that's BS or whether that's valid. Yeah. Okay. But, Look, that's what you do, and I don't do it that way. <laughs> so my question is, what's a moment where you are like, this dude just came on here and didn't <laughs> tell the truth? Tell me. So I know you got one that you're like. I mean, listen, since 2019, it's hard to have, have an interview where you don't really have anybody that's telling you actually yeah. telling you the you 100% about MLF? truth. Just the MLF and the Bass Split yeah. and the Elite Series right. and the FLW. Hey, are you happy over there? Hey, are you, They're not going to tell you want to come back? Yeah. Because everyone's an independent contractor who's trying to do what's best for them. Yep. And I don't think it's my job to put them on the spot. Like I'm giving them a, an opportunity and BTL gives them a platform mm -hmm. to say their piece and then let the viewer and the listener decide how accurate that is. Some guys, oh, and if, they let you know in that comment section yeah. down below, we, that's what we've been reading. Like that's been our whole thing lately is watch like watching yeah. your comments down below. So the Wheeler they're thing, smart. I'll tell you the Wheeler thing is interesting. There's a lot of guys that are like, Oh, this is okay. Here's some of the things that, that, that I, that I find funny. So I've known Wheeler since he was, uh, you know, since he won the all American. Sure. And because he's kind of from my neck of the woods, I was in central Illinois. He's Illinois. an Indiana guy. We fished some of the same lakes. Midwest I mean, I remember guys. when he got into it. And then I was at the cup that he won a couple years after wow. that. So he was the youngest. You know, he had the FLW magazine that the came out with hat. The, the next big fat thing. Head. Yeah. Well, yeah, the fat heads. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The yeah. sunglasses. Him a fat head. No, no, it was, it was his sponsorship. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, I've known him a, a, a long time. So I felt comfortable. I just said, hey, you know, you want to jump on BTL to talk about this? Have this was it. just last week yeah, or whatever. This is, after the this NLF is what you're this is what you're talking. About. No, 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 no. This is not what I was talking okay, about. Okay, but but we can talk about it. Okay, so I read the comments and I'm like, okay, everyone thinks. I hear, oh, Boyd is telling Wheeler what this ass. So Boyd went on Ike Live before Wheeler went on BTL, so Boyd could have the no. Like we'd already booked that before that. Then it's like, oh, Wheeler knew what was going to be asked. It sounded rehearsed. No. I told Wheeler to get on 10 minutes before the show so we could kind of have an idea of what the show was going to be sure. like. It goes live at 8.30. He jumps on at 8.29 and he's like, we good, big dog? That's what he said. See, That's how he talked. Yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah. I said, anything off limits? He's like, no, shoot. Hmm. Yeah. And I fired the intro up. No, I never, look, you know, I can't stand Wheeler. It's not a secret. His minions can come after me in the comments, whatever. But my only issue with him I watched the interview. I thought he did great. I yeah. thought, I thought, you know, and I don't care for him, but I thought he, you know, at least was, I felt like he was honest about some stuff that I was like, well, that's good for him, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's true. Um, but, um, you know, when you asked him about, I think it was something like, how do you handle the rumors that get said about you or something, right? Ah, did I you, say that? I don't know. He said something that. along the lines of like, people talk or something. And he he kind of like laughed it off like it was no big deal when you have like James Watson going on a full meltdown and he was talking about Wheeler in that situation. And I'm like, look, here's my thing with Wheeler. Just talk about it. Let's talk about it. He can come on here. I'll talk to him about it because I've tried to talk to him about it and he ran away. <laughs> Just sit here and say, OK, so these are the things I've been accused of and this is how I didn't do it. And then we all move on. OK, here's. That would be like having a hockey podcast where you have a guy on and you're trying to be like, did you trip that guy on a breakaway in the finals in 2014? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, was there a penalty? And he's like, no, there wasn't a penalty. Then I guess I didn't trip the guy. <laughs> like, I've always been okay, real. Well, but James said he had two inconclusive polygraphs, which that's a fancy word for saying it didn't go right. James said that. 
I this knew- is the biggest sport where your integrity is the only thing that you have on it. It's like golf so why- when the guy goes into the woods. You're assuming when that guy goes into the woods that he's not using the foot wedge. <laughs> and and you have to assume innocence until guaranteed guilt in fishing proof. because you you're need, in, you need, you need proof. absolutely okay. proof. For you sure. get DQ'd from a tournament, you get dinged, there's a press release. Ding. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't <laughs> But, but you see what I'm saying? No, so you have get, to give that. I get what you're saying, right? So then why do we even polygraph? Why are we polygraphing if people are having inclusive polygraphs and you say, well, we didn't have That's the evidence to go with it? Stop polygraphing them. Or make, if the, it doesn't matter. make the polygraph results public. public. But obviously there's some sort of legal thing yeah. with those organizations that that due to the legitimacy of it, they don't have to make those polygraph results public or it makes them open to some sort of legal representation i mean i've always been like well why don't you just do that that would stop so right, much of this right, gray area right. like x angler x angler x angler and x angler was polygraphed Results. this was inconclusive right. this failed or he passed but they you you sign it in your contract mm-hmm. too like you know that it it's ba- there's so much gray area in this sport that's unbelievable but that's, Sickening. i think that's my biggest issue with any of the rules if there's no way to enforce them then get rid of them because well, if if you're making a rule that it doesn't matter if this guy follows it and if this guy doesn't because you can't enforce it either way, then give the good guy a chance to play. You're making, but you're making an assumption there. What that that, people that it's are, not? Yeah, that that people are pushing it. So what you, you have to decide is is gray it. is gray area illegal or is it not? You have to treat right. this as black as and white. You are either cheating or you are not. And gray area is not cheating. That's like paying for a so, guide or information in the opens. Do most of the guys frown upon it? Yes. Is it illegal? No. Right. Can I count it against a guy who busts his ass and goes spends two weeks and maybe okay, hires got, a guide right, or gets waypoints? Right, no, right, it's not. Right. It's not illegal. I gotta, so it's on the organization then, Trey. I get it's on the that. organization to make it black and white. I, I totally get that. And that's what I'm saying. If it's a rule that they have that you can't enforce, then we should not have that rule. I would a hundred percent agree, and I and from what you I understand, I agree oh, absolutely. From my what I understand is most of these things, like a polygraph result, does not matter unless they have the text messages that were sent or they have video on exactly Proof. what you're doing. Sure. Then there's no point in polygraphing that person. It's like Ed was saying, we had Ed the lawyer on, yeah. you know, and he says there's so many freaking holes in that rule book. It's just like it's unenforceable. Like, there is. It's a private company, right? And you're like, you sign that thing. At listen, the start. go back to when Major League Baseball started mm-hmm. and look at the rule book from whenever eight, whenever it started, or the NBA or the NFL or whatever. Shout like, out to the Rangers, by the way. Yeah, yes. World Series yeah, night, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but those rule books started like this. Look, golf, golf's a perfect example. Sure. Individual sport, mm-hmm. cheating, all that. Yeah, it continues to grow and grow right. and grow every and grow. year. It seems to me like. Yeah, like we'll see. Like we'll rules. see a Keith Poche rule come yes. in, or we'll see. Back in the day, it was Roland the Lauren Martin, Martin rules yep. that came yeah, in, yeah. and all that. So it's growing. Is it growing as as fast as it should? Is it? Is are there committees and rules? People no, but I mean. So I have a question then, because you're a competitor, right? Yeah. All nine so, opens, right? Yeah. So um, this is a Jacob Wheeler thing, and no, it's tr- it, it. You can go look up the video. Yeah. So um. And it's one of the things, and it's more of a respect thing for competitors. That's why I want to hear your okay. your thoughts. He, w- when he was on the elites, um, the rule is you cannot catch a fish with your weight outside of the boat. So he was bed fishing, and all of his weight was on the dock, and he was firing the fish up, and then he could get back in the boat and technically catch that fish. Now he actually never caught the fish, but yeah. that's what it was. All of Best Life could see it. Yeah. I watched. Who was the guy who used to be a rule enforcer? I don't even remember yeah. this incident. No, no, like no. I, I don't yeah. no, no, no. What's the guy though? Chuck. Traits I, digging Chuck into Harvey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's like no, no, it's no, like no. way because back in there. This is. I have a valid question. Look, okay. but my issues with Wheeler could be worked out if we could talk about it. I, because I think it's disres- Some things were disrespectful, and people think I'm. They don't know the stories. So Chuck, I watched Chuck Harbin chew him a new one over it. I mean, it was all on Bass Live. So my question is, if you're a competitor and there's a guy with his weight outside the boat and they're firing a fish up and they put their weight in and they catch that fish, it's not against the rules. Do you say, oh, that guy is super smart or are you pissed when you get in? 
uh, if I see that, mm-hmm. I'm going to Bass and I'm saying, hey, at the end of the year Change when we do rule. a rule yeah. reevaluation. T- in the moment, you're saying you're thinking that far yeah, if ahead? He's, if he's not breaking a rule. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're gonna feel cheated. You're gonna feel cheated. But you're gonna say competitor. you're gonna say, dude, he's he's not breaking a yes. rule. Is it a gray area? Yeah. Yes. But that's where you should be able to go to the organization. Yes. And then at the end of the year they review it and then it goes into the effect. Just like yep. you can't climb the top of a ladder. Yep. Just so, like you can't So then all these kids who are getting all these waypoints and paying lots of money for them. We've had these discussions. Yeah. Do you feel that's okay? Uh do you feel like they're disrespecting you as a competitor? Even though it's completely legal. Yeah, no, I don't it's feel legal. like they're disrespecting no, it's legal. No. It's, it's their time, no. it's their money, it's their resources. Yeah, I, I don't. And there's no rule against it. Do I it. think it should be legal? Like no, little, he, but it like is legal. When we talk about it, you are like, this is messed up. I didn't say it wasn't messed up, but I don't feel like they're disrespecting me as a competitor. Listen, I'm very open on BTL that I talk to people who live on the lakes, and I've, right. I've gotten... Heck, I've gotten stuck. Okay, when I was going up to Thousand Islands for the hey, open. Oh, no, yeah, legally, I, yeah. I, I talked to you at, yeah. at ICAST, and you're like, uh, yeah. I said, I'm headed to Thousand Islands. You're like, oh, dude, there's this one spot here. He's like, you need to check it. And you pulled it up on Google Earth, and you showed it to mm-hmm. me. Now, no, there's no issue with me about getting, it's completely legal. But my question is, like, at what, do, do you not feel disrespected as a competitor if, by the gray areas that people are playing in? I didn't feel disrespected. You don't think there's a gray area that exists? There's no. Am gray I area. thrilled with it? No. Did I call Hank afterwards and say, "Dude, I don't think this should be legal," and I would like to see language that prevents this in 2024 and beyond? Yes. So, also like the MLF thing. Do you think those guys were, at Cayuga were playing in the gray area? My honest opinion on the MLF is that falls on the MLF tournament the staff and Daniel Fennell for putting their anglers in that position. Yeah. And there should have been black and white language instead of language that was interpretive and changed. So and you that, don't look at those anglers any differently? No, I don't. I think Matt Becker's gotten the raw end of this deal more than anybody in this whole thing. I really do. I, I agree with you. I think it's the organization that needs to protect those. Things. The organization should the know organization up until this point, these guys position. are going to push the envelope just like Smoke did in NASCAR, just like Kevin You're Harvick a NASCAR does in NASCAR. Person. Yeah. I know. Do I you, love it. Do you, do you complain at the NASCAR guys who get caught when they're crew chiefs and say, that I guy's do. a cheater. I'm never rooting for that guy yes. again. You're like, no, you're not. That's yeah. a competitive thing. No, 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 no. I know some of those guys, I think they're trash for as much as they cheat. I, I, I think- wait on the Tuesday, Wednesday night to come mm-hmm. out and be like, told you they were cheating. Listen, I think there's a lot of stuff that at Cayuga that went on behind the scenes that I don't really care that I know about. That's between the organization yeah. We just happen to be behind stage in this fishing. I know that goes on at every single other individual yeah. sport level. I don't think it 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 is a benefit for everybody to know what goes on behind the scenes or some stuff that shouldn't. But I think that was a, an, an issue where there was a lot of miscommunication yeah. and a lot of the anglers got the raw end of the deal. And that could have been easily fixed by Black the organization coming out and saying, listen, we botched this tournament. There yeah. were some rules that I weren't made. That's all they needed to do, dude. That's all but they needed to do. But I thought they already botched it because if you watched the year before at the St. Lawrence, they were doing the same crap. But there wasn't but any rule rules. against that. Yeah. Right. But And the public didn't pick up on And then they tried on. to make rules against it. But then you have to remember, this is four years old. We've only done catchway release for right. three years. So right. just like the infield fly rule where I'm sure someone let a fly ball drop and the other team went, wait a second, that's way too easy for a double play because if he doesn't, he stays on first. And if he doesn't, he runs. Then they put those rules into play. But I thought that's why they put a role in after the St. Lawrence was for this. But it obviously wasn't wasn't defined enough. Yeah. In my opinion. And you have no issue with anglers trying to find those little things they can exploit. I I just think it's (sighs) messed up. You know, I, I didn't do. say whether it's right or wrong, but you can't crucify a guy who didn't break a hard black or white rule. But you just said I didn't say if it I'm was talking right from or wrong. A, also f- from an angler and a media perspective. Right. Would you do it? it? It totally depends on the situation. On Matt, what would you, you have you, caught you ought to, two you know, fish off listen, of a bed? Matt, hey, can I just tell you yeah. something? That bathroom over there, you better not leave the toilet seat up i'm just saying right now because this is what i deal with every single time (laughs) listen this is the way that i that i fish the that i fish and do it jeffrey's told me a long time ago i started in 20 
12 or 13, I fished the BFLs and I was like, well, what, how do I know whether if I can go in on a guy or not? Yeah. And he goes, dude, he goes, here's the way you do it. He goes, if it crosses your mind that it might be wrong or you have to justify what you're doing. Yeah. He goes, it's wrong. Yeah. He goes, if you 100% know in your mind that what you're doing, you believe it's right, regardless of what it is. He goes, never back down. You know what the issue is with that? Not, you know. You have a Mark Jeffries to tell you that and give you that advice, a but ninety nine percent of them don't compass. have that Mark Jeffries, and it's just like go go go, man. Okay, is it gray area, man? I really need to make a check this week. Let's let's go. Listen, it comes down to whether are you trying to get away with something, right, or are you trying to fish up to the quote brick wall, right? I got no problem with the trying to fish up to the brick wall, taking advantage of the rules, mm-hmm. maximizing the rules to your advantage. Yeah. As long as you 100% believe that you are operating within mm-hmm. the rules, whether you think it's morally wrong or right and trying to get away with something. Okay. So yeah. then uh, let's go back. We were talking about earlier, when Chris qualified for the elites that first mm-hmm. year he fished the opens, the Tommy Biffle thing. And I love Tommy Biffle. I, I th- He's amazing. I think that he's got shafted by MLF and you, Tommy, need to come back to bath. Oh, he's not you there think anymore? everybody gets shafted by MLF. <laughs> well, they do. He's Tommy not there did. anymore? I thought he was still there. You don't even know what he's doing. That's my point. Him and Mike McClellan got, got out, outed the same year, huh? Oh, no. Or no, I, no, I don't know. I think he still fishes there. That's my point. You don't know about Is Tommy anymore. There? Is he yeah. still at? Oh, he is. See, he's still there. But that's my point. You good. have he's no living clue. living a happy life. He has no clue what's going on with Tommy. <laughs> okay, so here's my that's thing. He's an Oklahoma legend. Man. He is. He is. Dude, I, I love, love him. Tommy Biffle. Okay, so Biffle Bog, dude. So my, th- so Tommy, the year that you qualified, you could have made the classic, but what happened? You got second, mm-hmm. and Tommy rolls up at takeoff. What's the last day of the tournament? Yes. Day three, right? Yes. And uh, Tommy asks. If he can fish an area that if he would have asked the night before we discussed, mm-hmm. would have been told no, right? Okay. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. M- yeah. More than likely. Had the tournament director done his due diligence and homework, he would have known that this was a potential issue on Correct. that fishery and he would have already known what the ruling was prior to being asked. Correct. So, and tournament fi- and tournament directors are humans and they make little mistakes like So that. who's that on? Tommy or the tournament director? Tournament that director. He was told he could do it. Okay. If I'm told I can do something in the tournament, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go do it. And that's what happened okay. up next there step. at Cayuga as well. I got a next step. Yeah. So what about the people who, over the years, are in favor with the tournament directors, and so they get these OKs? That's a hypothetical question. That, in your opinion, they're getting favoritism. <laughs> I got some stories, Matt. I got some stories. Okay, this is another another instance, and then I'll get off this subject because uh, I don't know wherever, whenever else I'm going to get. We're already about like these an hour things. and a half into this. Mm. No, no, no. We're just, just seems getting that way. Into it. Uh, so um, there is an event. It was a Toyota Championship. And there's a the marinas were off limits, or this marina was off limits, and there <laughs> was a tree. talking about Jacob Wheeler Cumberland. See, you even know about down it. in Indian Creek. So I don't, I don't know all that stuff. I've never been there, but I saw the video on LiveScope mm-hmm. and there's a tree hanging that's tied to the marina that is off limits mm-hmm. and that tree was being fished. Mm-hmm. He cleared it with the tournament director. Tournament director deemed based on where he was fishing that he was not breaking a rule. He didn't clear it with the tournament director. He cleared it with Bill Taylor. That was not the tournament director. Okay, then Bill Taylor should have directed him to a tournament director. He brought it to the attention of someone at FLW that's or MLF. Point. That's my point. Like I know, but you can't crucify an angler for that. Yeah. I just, I'm with Matt on that one. You if can't you get the, okay. crucify an angler for Listen, going that happened, to someone that's not the that TD happened to Ron Nelson. and asking for stuff that deep down inside... You should go work all, for FLW. How do you know that, that deep down inside he knew that? You know you as an individual. Mm-hmm. You don't know anyone else I, as an individual. I, that's what I'm saying. Like He obviously, me and him, I was raised a little different. Okay. So... Of the nine opens <laughs> this this past season, where'd you finish in points? By the way, 
Uh, I was in 40th, and then I didn't go to the last one. I ended up finishing oh, really? like, 53rd. Yeah. Okay. It would have so cost knew- me $5,000 additional, and I had... Is that a, what it is? Yeah, dude? and I would have gotten... No, additional for me, because Upshaw didn't go. I roomed with Upshaw. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to stay by myself. Oh, yeah, no, that's a mess. I had to no, drive to Florida. You that's fished the St. Jude, right? And stuff? Yeah, I would have had to drive to Florida, fly to Minnesota, oh, fish that call. with no tack, yeah. drive back to Florida, practice for a day, yeah. fish for two days with nothing, and then drive 13. I know you months. cover this on BTL, like every, you know, b- the post game, and, you you know, you talk about your experience and things like that, but do, do you, do you feel like you, like you're hanging with like the, those guys like, in every single tournament of those nine tournaments? Well, it was different. Cause this Personally. time all nine guys came out of nowhere, nowhere right? That's like all the guys that. that I was trying to hang with. I was like, that's right like, there who and is hung with them. Yes. Yeah, right. I don't know, but I think like, I felt like if forward facing sonar was going to play, the guys that we see up top, the Milliken, I I thought if it played, he would be there. I mean, John Garrett. It played yeah. in every tournament. This no, but that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I thought, like if it plays, I feel like the guys we see were gonna be up there. I mean, there are a bunch of guys that I didn't know were that good at forward facing sonar that became yes. That kind that, of stood that's kind of what I. That's kind of what I mean. I, I would have taken like a veteran or guy that's been like a john garrett there's a there were a bunch of john garretts in the field this year and right. we're talking about Young an average snipers. age in the top five of 22 and a half and an average age of 26 for came the out of 10. nowhere dude you know came out and i can't even name their names to tell you the truth and i, I need to do a little more research and be a little more like well you, we saw that on the guy. bpt with what we saw like you throw becker i mean becker's yeah. been around and ebear has been yes around, but, eBear, yeah. but they're beaten guy to have millions and millions and millions Hours, of yeah. of earnings did you have any run-ins on the water with any of those snipers those top five guys that made it uh, no they were all cool i'm like the old guy to them wow like jt dude. would always stop and ask how everything's that's going. tompkins the, the yeah. little guy we're gonna do a and he podcast finished with him, like, he yeah. finished first and the I blew everyone away to really? have to show up on the last no trip. kidding yeah that much of a beating huh yeah i mean dude the guy does his homework yeah he, Who, he spends like 300 days on the water does his that's homework insane, dude. Uh, up like on the tournament waters. he's angry at him wow so who are some of the prospects i, I know you're a stat guy and, and and you do your homework as well uh who are some of the prospects going into like 2024 who are you going to personally look out for um competing in those nine opens do you have any insight on no, any of the I'm higher up names? I'm still uh, like old school, so it's still hard for me to, especially with going to like places like Santee and Okeechobee mm. uh, to start, like places where I think you see a lot of the guys that made it started strong because it's a lot easier to fish for 50th and 60th in the yeah. back half of the year like yeah. Milliken did yeah. and make it than to start with 50th and 60th and then fish for 10th because then you put yourself in position for 130th. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, it's hard for me to get away from those, you know, like the Bobby Lanes and yeah. the Ishes and Brandon McMillan. Are we going to see Bobby Lane come back? Are we going to see Ish come back to the Opens? I would assume so. You assume so, yeah. yeah. How about, what? If, what's the number of guys that wore a red shield this year? Uh, if you were to give one number. Like the BPT guys? Yeah. Come on. Two. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I think it'll be the same every year. A couple of them. If yeah. you look at it. A lot of balking then. I mean, even saying. with you go back, even if the line of credit's gone, you go back to a $40,000 entry fee this next year. Okay. You're still paying half the field. You're still right. $100,000. You're yeah. $300,000 red crest. You're no entry fee heavy hitters. I mean, go look at the list of earnings on the BPT hey, this year. Yeah. Here's the thing. They love the wine, but they're not going to do anything about it. And, and, and why, if 25 of them came into the Opens, only nine of them that, can make it. That's a big number, dude. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think There's we'll ever see 25. Chance. So they're going to just ride it as long as they can because the chances, especially, and you have to think a lot of them know they've got no chance to get like through the Opens. 16 guys made a profit in the Opens this year. Oof. Out Yikes. of like the 500 some that fished all. Oh my gosh, yeah. dude. Do, do did have you done the math on the new payouts and stuff? Is it any yeah, better? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's, it it's is better. a lot better, especially They're for that thirteenth like through thirtieth. They th- jumped it up two hundred bucks a tournament, 
where but they're still paying out and they're paying out five more places too. Yeah, right? down to 45 yeah. based on a 235 boat field. So that'll jump back to 40 once it gets to 180 boats, which is fine. Didn't Bobby Lane at the start of this season hop on BTL and announce on BTL that he was fishing the open? Uh, I don't know if he announced. He came on and talked about it. Didn't though. we have this conversation or text message? Or didn't like most of the, the audience think like, oh, I'm a shoe in. Like he's going to qualify. Mm-hmm. And look what happened. Like so these a, young snipers 11. sniped him. I have a question about that. You know, we talk about, obviously, we, me and you talk about the amount of information. It just feels like. Every I've gotten information in the opens. It just feels like this year was like crazy. Like some of the stuff I was hearing and it could just be people bitter, but I was hearing all sorts of stuff. But when you look at Tommy or um, Bobby making 11th and you know what you know behind the scenes, do you think like it's a little messed up? No, it's illegal. Okay. I, <laughs> Trait is a Texas rattlesnake that lives in the weeds. It'd be she messed up if, if it was, I if I thought know. that six of the top 10 were cheating i think zero of the top 10 were cheating no i think they freaking play the played the game right they figured out how to do do you like the rules of the game Uh, no i said i called i called uh hank and and granted it wasn't like i just called them like they give out a questionnaire right yeah bass has been very open with the opens on what can we do to make this better and all that so i mean that's what they need to do every year actually quarterly they need to do that quarterly yeah yeah when it's hot, though. yeah. When it's hot and fresh. I mean, we all just we just got our ass kicked. Yeah. yeah no, I, I, they, the guys who <laughs> dude, they're good now, dude. The These guys kids are who good. dominated, dominated. Yeah. Um. So then my question too is, you're admitting you're kind of the old guy now, and you've got <laughs> yeah. the podcast. Nineteen eighty four. Yep. Yeah. Um. Do you keep <laughs> doing this? Do you keep <laughs> only hockey guys? Yeah, know what yeah, year they yeah. were born in? What year are you? Yeah. <laughs> do you yeah. feel like you need to keep doing this? Do you feel like okay, maybe your time's extremely limited now with what's going on? No. So it's there's two things here. There's a there's a quality of life. There's like a reason to get up in the morning to have something to shoot for towards a goal. I still have that. I mean, I'm already thinking about uh about, you know, a little pre practice trip down to Okeechobee, Good how I need to get to Washita. Mm-hmm. Getting ready for next year. That kind of keeps me going. I always nice. try to do something every day to get new ready for New boat this year it. too, right? Yeah, yeah new, new cat yeah. this year. Heck yeah. Uh, so that like is what kind of gives me the drive because that's my passion. That's what right. I, I love to do. I love to compete. I love to fish. But then I also think it adds to the podcast, the show. It gives me a voice. It keeps Ammo. So when you I understand? went when I went to every yeah. single Elite Series event for 11 years and then just fish the nation stuff i was like in the game then right so Mm -hmm. i was on the water i was talking to guys like chris i was knowing what was going on you take that out where then you only go to classic red crest one bpt one elite you like lose touch really easy so then the open puts you right back in it talking with those guys seeing what's important it gives you a voice i mean i'm dropping even with the sponsorship i'm dropping twenty thousand dollars of my own money into the opens I feel like that kind of gives me uh, in the uh, in the trenches. You feel what it's truly sure. like to you understand, understand that. It, it's yeah. I look at it all as a giant, I get it. as a giant circle. Like I don't separate them. Like the show enhances the fishing, and the fishing sure. enhances the nice, show. Dude. And my value it's fishing is not it. the same without the show, and my value of the show is not the same without the fishing. It's a good way that. to look at it. I get with. I good proportions to- yeah. right there yeah i Very get that good. totally i feel like the stuff that i did on the retail side i could have couldn't have done without being in the opens like it was necessary the stuff that i'm able to do in business meetings i'd have no clue what i was oh talking it pissed about people before. off how much money you made off the water oh yeah like yeah. i mean they'd be like she's never cashed a damn check yeah. and she's making yeah. six figures yeah. and i go into every damn walmart, walmart and yeah. there's a trait yeah. chris thing and i'm yeah. like boot that's that's like part of the hustle it is yeah. It yeah, is. I had to you find can't a knock way to on make anyone. It. No, you can't knock on anyone for I had that to find hustle. Find a way yeah. to make it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the same with you. I mean, look, you've changed uh, boat brands yep. and title sponsors yep. and yep. baits and all that. Yep. But I mean, look, you got the batteries here yep. and the logo behind yep. here yeah, yeah. and and all that. I mean, yep. that's all part of the the. You cannot. I. You see the old school guys, and I feel like yeah, it's there's a there's they've some of them have earned a right to kind of make the rest of the living at it right. but there's like a whole kind of middle class this is just my opinion yeah who don't understand the value of of what's going i on? wouldn't say i don't even want to say multiple revenue streams but a a full package brand, a package yes. deal a brand yes. so we talk about this all the time when they're off like look you compete 
what, nine Elite Series events, 18 to 27 days on the water mm-hmm. out of 365 That's days. That's a lot yes. of other time. Dude, isn't it crazy how, like, here we are in the fall. It is the off season. Like, like you lose touch with your favorite fishermen. Like, like those guys are off hunting. They don't post as much and as companies they do. talk about that. I'll never I, forget 13 was like, oh, y'all don't hunt. Perfect. That yeah. means we could get some fishing content yeah. in the off season. Yeah. You know, and you see, you see a lot of these guys like in the fall, like, and you, I'm already seeing it in my feed. It's like they're posting pictures from the spring. Oh, I can't wait for the springtime bite. Dude, that's like five months away. Like, dude, like you got to stay busy, bro. Which like, I get it. But I think like you have to figure out what your personality yes, is. You can't just not, be like, hey, yes. I have to do something to right, stay relevant. Yeah. You have to find something you're passionate yes. about that makes people want to come back to yep. your yep. brain. And everyone has something. Right. They just have to figure that it's, out. Um, so, it's like it's called being diversified. Me and Charles have been talking lately. We've been trading some stocks and stuff and waking up talking, <laughs> you know, you- looking looking for hot on that on the twitter feed there <laughs> <laughs> looking for opportunities on on um you know what we can buy in but but in in the finance side you call it being diversified so your f- portfolio you're not just all in on real estate or on um health or whatever you got a little bit in each in case one one of those sectors sectors dives down your other one will keep you afloat right it's the same here if you just go all in on the tournaments and you have a bad year and you got nothing else going on, you're screwed. Or if you go all in on the podcast and something happens to your podcast, people are uninterested mm-hmm. and you got nothing else, you're screwed. You got to have a little bit of everything. So JT Tompkins, right? So he was the AOI this year. Yep. Um, hell of a fisherman. We, we know that. Um, you said he's a hard worker. He does his homework. He grinds. Mm-hmm. And that shows if you look at my inbox, like, (laughs) yeah, after six tournaments of the nine, he was looking good. He was looking great. Like he was hitting me up, like in my inbox saying, hey, dude, like this thing really may come to fruition. This I might qualify. I don't want any surprises. Like, what can I expect he on the to sponsor talk. side? Yeah. He wanted like, to talk business. Like somewhere. he did, dude. Like he did. And like props to him. And, and like we're watching him like a hawk. Uh, and I'm really curious because one bit of advi- bit of advice that that Skeet Reese, I looked up to him my whole career. We talked about this. I mean, be, me being a Western guy, like the biggest thing he he's ever told me, you know, as I was coming up. And I remember sitting in his big truck out west, and and he's just like, dude, he doesn't let anybody in that. Truck. I know, dude. I felt so. I know. <laughs> I, I was Chris like, in it anymore. Yeah, no, <laughs> no I, and uh, he, you know, he, he, the biggest thing he told me as I was aspiring to be where he was was dude no two paths are the same like everyone has a different path is just as quick as you think oh you know ski give me the outline what what points do i need to hit to 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 be where you're at there are no two paths that are the same so like i give props to jt Tompkins, not only finishing first in the in the points in the opens but like he's proactively reaching out like dude what can i expect and just like you've been talking about for years and years and years, you have to have this well-rounded program, this whole package, where it's not just fishing. We talk about that all the time, but that dude's a grinder, dude. And I will be watching how how he kind of fills out his portfolio and gathers as much ammunition as possible to shoot at those sponsorships to, to ensure a successful career. I mean, and he is there. He is. He, he loves yeah. my ammo and, and <laughs> shooting analogies. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what it takes. And that's only the broad outline of it. It's not like a, a set thing where, oh, you must appear on BTL every month or you must have exactly, you know, you uh, what, two be, posts a week. You have to be genuine and yes, authentic that's in the what biggest you're doing. thing. That's the biggest you know, thing. I'll, whether I'll... it's dancing, whether it's a color, whether it's it's the BTL, the crappie fishing in the off season, yeah. like it's it's it's. It's still got to be what you do yeah. because people are going to, if you're that guy who's making a post every day just to make a post Forcing every it, day, right. they're going to see that through that. that. But if it. you're making a post every couple of days that it's actually like what you're interested in, it's going to go off great. But my question, Matt, something I wonder, okay, so you're you're doubling down, you're staying in the opens, yeah. you uh, admit like that's part of what you're doing. It's a piece of the puzzle that you know you have to do. So- if you were to read some comments or get in the forums, you know, some people think you're slacking on the episodes in their opinion, right? Yeah. Because they're used to just the way Mark did it. Would you agree to that that's happening or no, 
and and but whatever would you bring a co-host in too have you thought about that yeah so originally no one thought that the show could even be yeah that without a co-host like it, for the first two months that i took it over two years ago because i mean if you're not familiar with btl jeffrey's uh jeffrey started i co-hosted it with him for 13 14 years yeah a long time and then uh when he retired a little over two years ago um you're like, well, who's going to be your co-host? Is it going to be Brad Hallman? You're going to bring someone else in? What's it going to be? You know, I took over everything, and I was like, I'm just going to feel it out, yeah, and, and kind of see where it goes. Uh, and now, I mean, I don't get any of those questions at all. So then, last no. year, I did all, uh, like I'm still trying to figure out what the right thing is. You guys Formula. know that with yeah, the pod, yeah. with yeah, the yeah. podcast, like it right. changes, dude. Every yeah. year. So last year, I mean, I did I had 230 episodes. That's heavy. But I would do all recorded episodes. So like if I was gone for three weeks, which I mean, that's kind of the downside of it. I would I would have 12 shows that I'd record. Like there were times where I'd be home for three days. I'd have an open. I'd come home for three days and I'd leave for another open. And during those three days, I'd shoot 13 episodes of BT. Wow. Dude, that's I'd shoot. I'd shoot all those episodes and then I would edit them all, render them all, put them all out oh my gosh. on podcast platform and then put them all out on YouTube, schedule them all out for the next three weeks, Ooh, schedule heavy. everything and then leave the very next morning and be done for that. So then people got, so there were, I wanted to explore the live element of it, but there's a fine line because you have to figure out like, are you going to impact your tournament fishing right by doing the live podcast right it's tough. and kind of a little bit kind of through this year i realized that that's really hard so i'm gonna have to rely on some other people to yes. help me going into next year uh so that you can be an a plus in both the well i've never been an a plus are, in the fishing, are you talking but, are you concerned with like exposing patterns and things no i'm concerned mental, with content just yeah. the mental uh, if i go out on a tuesday and i know i'm doing a live show on yeah. tuesday at seven i'm worried about that guy that i'm gonna have all on day that night. yeah and you're trying to practice yeah yeah when yeah. i have a recorded show it may not have the hit yeah but i can focus on the fishing so Oof. like next year what i'm trying to do is dial in the live show so i can have just as many live shows on location and be able to focus on the fishing, has, which involves um, bringing someone else in. Has Mark had any issues or said any positives with you? Has he been paying attention lately? Yeah, he's he's been really good over the last two years. You know, he's a full time like uh, bowling coach at Southern Nazarene University. Some, we got one of the pro bowlers in our neighborhood or something. Hey, Who? Fishes. Je- Jeffries knows yeah, about Yeah, Jeffries him. reached out. Yeah, reached out to us uh, for him. For him. Yeah, I still need to hook up with him. I forget really? who it is. Yeah. Those guys Some are hammer. badass. Yeah. Uh, but no, he's been really good about letting me make it my own and do mine. I've brought him in for a couple of shows. I still talk to him, I'd say on a monthly basis. Um, just to kind of run by some stuff. Dude, you but, have your own voice, your voice on all the ads, the intro. Dude, yeah. that is so badass, dude. I love that. I love that. How- that's, that's such a grind. That's one thing I kind of wanted to talk to you about was that business side of it. Yeah. Um. When you're doing business, do you keep the podcast separate from your opens career? Yeah, or I do really you try. Co- I really. Them? It just kind of depends now. Like when I worked with Jeffries, I did everything separately. Um, it's a little bit easier to co-mingle them now. Uh, and I mean, I'm still searching for feelers for like that big title deal that yes. would include the opens and the pod the podcast right, right. but i mean it's a really natural integration well i feel like you're established on both sides yeah. both the competitive side and that podcast space so it's like i mean it yep. to me it's a no-brainer to invest in something like that because you get a two for one yeah really and it's it's leaps and bounds ahead of i would say i mean 85 to 90 percent of the guys i'm competing against right now it's like it's a hell of a platform you yeah got going. it's a real natural yeah do you fit. feel like when you um are running a podcast that you have to tiptoe around some sponsor issues no i really don't um i mean obviously i'm gonna focus on some sponsors and you, just like you do like you just had the this place the yeah. The Battleborn thing. dude yes, that just yeah. that just dropped, right? Yeah. Right. And you've had a uh, thirteen fishing in yep. to talk about that. But I look at that as like taking advantage of the opportunities right. and really deep diving into it. Everyone wins. You're open, it's a sponsorship. Yeah, we're talking about thirteen fishing, we're talking about battleborn batteries, just like we talk about 
uh, whether it be a Denali or a Pro Guide battery yeah. show. I have Matt Looney who comes on and talks about it. So like, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I mean, as long as you're open, uh, I mean, you run right. the ads. The ads are what they are, but sure. it's just kind of the overall feel of it and the inclusion of that product that I think where you get the real bang for the buck as a sponsor. Have you ever it's, gotten in trouble by a sponsor? Have you ever had a phone call? Even when Duckett was sponsoring, y'all were doing those interviews. The right only then? call I've gotten from him is that he's no longer sponsoring the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's awesome. And he directly uh, made the call? He had one of his people. Had one of his people, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Was that, uh, was that a direct result of one of the shows? or was, uh, this, it was, it was a, just a week after I took over. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, yeah. Which is fine. I mean, it's business. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's just how sponsorships yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, it's just business. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just crazy how, I mean, like, again, we talk about it all the time. It seems like every, every year or two, it, it, the ability to stand out or the opportunity to stand out, that whole landscape just changes, whether it's a podcast, the way you deliver. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, 13 Fishing just wants to see a couple more rods sold. At the end of the yeah. day, Battleborn just wants to see Pro God, whatever it is, it wants to see a couple more batteries sold. But there's also, I think, a value in like a relationship and an interaction between it. So, like, I mean, yeah, like I called Matt Looney, who works at Pro Guide after he'd, he had you know, I was in the top 30 after day one of the MPFL because I was checking because I was like... Who's Matt Looney? Is he an owner? Of no, the... he like runs there. Okay, runs okay, their... okay, gotcha, He's gotcha. Be real informative of it. But he had a good day. So like I texted him, but I would have texted him just because I'm like Either friends way. with him, yeah. right? right? Yeah. And then uh, like when I was out in California, I went surfing with Casey Shedd yeah. from AFCO. Yep. But that's because I'd spent three days a year before in the boat with Casey Shedd on Table Rock, like... Right. And, and he was like, dude, you're in California. Come out. That wasn't like, a, oh, I need to do of this course. for my no, sponsor. Right, that right, was like right, right. genuine people that you enjoy That's kind of being around. Right like, I'll drink a blue moon with Brian Head from Denali because we're the two that when we get together, like to drink a pitcher of blue moon and BS about that stuff. So it's real. It's like natural. Right. And there's some other sponsors for the right? show that really just want to see the numbers and their name out there and the commercial and the repetition that, right. that adds. Right. But, you know, uh, and that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of them, you end up getting a personal relationship. And then as you get older, like the guys who start in like sales, then they're like, hey, guess what? I got this job. And yes. now you're like, holy cow, like I know everybody who's running all this stuff now and making yep. the decisions yep. that were, you know, real low, low level guys when they started. That's a good point and a big deal. I'm and sure you've seen that a lot. too. Well, you know, who was who is the goat of that kind of relationship keeping was Dean Rojas. And I don't know if you still keep in touch with oh, yeah. Dean and I forget what year it was or what the circumstance was, but it was just after an AOI tournament and like 14 or 15 or whatever. And, and I know you're real tight with Dean and he was just absolutely going off on whoever won AOI that year for not, you know, Oh, he just held up an AOI trophy. Like, and he was saying, dude, why is that guy not on an airplane two days after winning this I AOI trophy that. and going to every one of his sponsors and shaking hands with the yeah. people that signed his checks and helped him hold up this AOI trophy? The guy holds up the AOI. I don't know the name of the guy, holds up the AOI trophy. Oh, we're done. Okay, cool. That was an awesome year. And then that's it. And then January yeah. comes around when sponsored negotiations come back around. Are we going to renew this contract of this AOI winner? Why weren't you here? Like, why, why not? Mm -hmm. Like, why not? Well, why not hop say, on a plane? You don't. You don't. Stay in you don't. Their head, yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm guilty of that too. And that's why I have someone like you to help me with that. And yeah, I talk to his sponsors more than he talks. Yeah. To his I mean, and, I, and that's just the way I. And you know, and 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 you and you but do you a great job. But you guys are like a team. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like but, a. But you got to keep those relationships. I think the guys to. really don't. A lot of guys don't understand, you know, like you want that sort of relationship. You want the company to be able to call you and say whatever is on their mind, whether mm -hmm. it's good or bad and vice versa. Mm -hmm. They it's want so you key. to be able to call them. And if you're in a re I found that if we're ever in a relationship where we can't have that sort of communication it's a bad situation. It ain't worth the sponsorship. And, yeah, yep. you need to get out of it. Yep. If they don't want you talking to them the way they talk to you or vice versa, just move on. And whether that's skinny bear jigs or black rifle coffee or whatever it is, like you have to treat every single one. And you know that. You know. I mean, some of you have a, a 
friend relationship yeah. with and others it's professional but right. as long as you have the the two and i'm not saying i'm like super great at this like i'm sure i leave no we're all learning a lot all of learning. money yeah. on the table and i've made a lot of mistakes and right. i'm still making a lot of mistakes Same. but um so and when you talk about leaving money on the table um and we talked about this the last time i was on btl about a month and a half ago or so the black box, the black sponsor box. Jeffries came up with an idea of all of the elite guys or even all <laughs> the MLF guys that. anonymously passing around a black box. Say, here, Matt, you know, you fish the opens, you know, don't write your name on it, but just tell us how much income you make on the sponsorship dollars and drop mm-hmm. that in that black box and then pass it on and pass it on and pass it on. And could you imagine if we did that nowadays and then opening up that box at the end of the year and seeing, oh, 20k you know 15k i think you'd be shocked absolutely shocked at how much the guys you think that are killing it aren't and how much the guys you think that aren't killing it like sub 50k like sub 50k and And, entry fees are 50 and guys that you think aren't getting a cent are yep mid six isn't that crazy isn't that that seem that's absolutely fair to say and you've been around long that's why i bring that up Mm -hmm. you've been around long enough to know you could almost like you're you've been around long enough to know i feel like i am too where you could like look at a guy, you know, just his demeanor, his uh, his followers, um, what sponsorships he does represent, and how well he does. Like you could almost put a number figure on. It. And I wish I could. We could be public about that, or or bring the black box thing. I mean, that's still that's something that would be helpful for everyone, in my opinion. It mm-hmm. really would, and we could all have that discussion. That's a uh, yeah. That's something I wanted I, on the business side too to talk to you about. There is a lot. And I know we probably should be winding down, but there's a lot of people (laughs) talking about boat deals right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you talk to anglers about their deals and stuff? I feel like Jeffrey's used to. Do do you? I really don't. No. No. I mean, that to me, that's between that angler and the person and each sponsor might see a different value. It's so hard to have that conversation now because if you're an angler, your sponsor doesn't want you putting out what you make. And then also you don't want other sponsors to know what you're getting. No, it's confidential. And I could honestly say in the 13. It's it's because it's independent contracting. It is. It is. And in 13 years I've been doing, I probably only, and this is honest, like I've only shared with maybe two dudes, like real specific numbers, you know, and that's not through the whole duration of 13 years. I'll get anglers that call and they're like, Hey man, what do you, what do you think like is worth a deal with this is worth? Yeah. Hard to say. Hard to say. And they have no clue. Yeah. yeah no, I, and they're like, do you just, they're like, I'm not looking for names or anything. I'm just, I'm just kind of spitballing because I'm working with them and I have no idea what to come in at. I'm trying it's to, I want to so do sad. a podcast. He wouldn't be able to be there, but like, <laughs> I'm trying to think about maybe me and maybe Becky Iconelli and I don't know who else to put on there where we know enough financially where we could say things without naming anglers and really say what what the landscape looks like because it is so hard to talk about that stuff but people have like you said people have no clue when they're like what should i ask for like they really don't know their worth and our industry is so weird and i think we've talked about this before um and this has kind of been a hot topic here lately the initial mlf meeting hey i want you to give up everything you did over at bass i want you to come over the mlf side the biggest selling point to me to me yeah, I don't know if it was straight from Boyd's mouth or one of their mouths, uh, was there needs to be an industry standard. that It needs to be a standard where a guy that calls you and says, what do you think this sponsorship is worth? Whether it's a an exact 14-inch logo or these sets of that deliverables. That bowling. It, it, does it exist? Yeah, There's like, a standard, right? Like There's, every single patch. Like, There's a standard. Yeah, a minimum. So like to have this patch, it's like, Ten thousand dollars, and here's the list of approved companies that it can be. Oh, this patch location is is minimum five thousand dollars, and here's the different. So that's what they pitched, be. and that was so appealing to me. Obviously, it never came, you know, came to mm-hmm. fruition. But that's where we need to be. That's really where we need to be. That's I standard. Know. I don't know. That sounds like a welfare system, and I don't want this guy's standard to be the same as your standard. Personally, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's there. like a minimum, though. Minimum. A minimum. Man. So what it what it prevents is a guy coming in and having a logo across a his BS chest one. for a yes. hundred dollars. Yes. And then a I company like going, "Why would I? Why would Black Rifle put a I hat like on Chris? Yeah. 
for X number of dollars yep. when this angler's doing it. I like it. Bud, and that happens. I'm doing it for free. Yes. <laughs> Tacticock. That's a Tacticock. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was That was because of you. When nice, you were on the show dude. and I said it, they sent me a couple of t-shirts. Heck yeah. Paul's cool, dude. And they rep- I mean, and they. I don't think I've ever met Paul. Oh, he's really cool, dude. Fish head, swim bait guy, finesse fisherman. Out on fisherman. Lanier, right? That's yeah, he he's staying at Watson's house right now. Okay. And, uh. But yeah, I mean, just having having that standard that would that would uh, that would definitely something needs to it happen. would prevent yeah. the undercutting that happens a lot in yeah. the sport of bass fishing. Like you, I don't s- even say unintentional undercutting. Unintentional. You've got right. a bunch yeah. of guys trying to make it. Yeah, yeah I don't blame. We're those just trying people. to make it. Yeah, I'll see a lot um, logos, and what a lot of people don't know is in the contract, a logo has to be. It's like a brand's <laughs> guideline. It has to be a certain way, right? Yeah. It can't have a certain background. It or can't be a certain Z. size. It's got to be a yellow Z, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. And you'll see the ones that you're like, they got no clue. I know they're not getting a dime. Yeah. Because you would crazy, never be able dude. to rock that logo that yep. way. Yep. They're clu- and, and I don't blame them, but it's also, you know, mm-hmm. it's an issue in the industry for yep. sure. So we got all nine opens coming up again next year. Wait, are we dabbling in anything else uh, next year? No, I think grinding on the pod mainly. Yeah, and pod, then, and then the nine opens. Actually, um, I'm probably gonna jump in a few of the uh, jackpots in Oklahoma team yeah. stuff. Uh, the nickels, and then the skeeters. I can. Those fish. have been around forever. Yeah, so it's either a boat or twenty thousand for that. That's r- real grassroots you, payback. You need to come down and fish with Chris and some stuff since you got. Uh, a girlfriend down here in Fort Worth. Yeah, I'd totally be down with that. But <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got, uh, I've been talking with one of the guy who just won the Brandon Belt Championship yeah, a yeah. couple months ago. I'm yeah, how much did that pay? I heard that paid a, like stupid money. A ton money. of money. But uh, yeah, there's between, I'd say between uh, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Texas, those are the three. Or you can make some money. Those are the three money states if you want to fish locally. Grassroots stuff. I'm going to fish with Austin Cranford, who also fishes the Opens. And uh we started fishing together this year and like I, we both scope a lot, mm-hmm. but we scope differently, but it matches. Does that make sense? Like you could work together and talk. So the way balances. he scopes, he, he scopes differently than me. So he can scope for me and then go scope for him. And we're fishing two different fish <laughs> and it's worked. It's worked real well so far. So we were like, dude, we need to do this. Like besides a Thursday nighter. How, how, um, you can't predict the future, but how do you see the forward facing sonar conversation going in 2024? Do you still see the same exact complaints going? And I'm going to, and I asked you this because one of the more popular riggers in our sport yeah. just sent me a photo of a guy, Elite Series guy, boat he rigged yesterday. And it's the very first I've ever seen. Four 12 inch screens on I the front. I heard you were doing that. Nah, nah. No, I did. Nah. I heard that you like were, were like going to prove a point and put like eight scopes on your boat. So I thought about it. I We thought about doing. Don't play we. You were like, okay, if this is what they're going to do, I'm going to put the most obnoxious setup on my boat yeah. and send it to make a point. In the back of my head, I was like, "Man, what if I don't catch them with all that crap on my boat?" But I've adopted, <laughs> I've I've adopted the you know the whole forward facing storm, and I love it. I, I actually do. Mm-hmm. And we all know, like, in order to be competitive, you got it, you got to have it. But where do you see that conversation in twenty twenty four? Is it gonna is it gonna die off? I mean, it's we all gonna, love it. I think it's gonna be the same thing, and then yeah. they're gonna come out with some limitations, just like restrictor plate, either one or two transducers, right. and the guys are gonna catch it, and it's here to stay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't listen, I think a lot of it, it a lot of it, a hundred percent, I think a lot of the discussion around forward facing sonar is based on fractions of a cent on YouTube views. Hmm. And I think I mean I think like, Randy and all those oh, guys you think are just dry people wanting to I hundred percent because you could literally listen to one of his deals on it and then the same exact same points a day later yeah will be brought up somewhere somewhere else, else. interesting yeah. and yeah. so i think it's a lot of the same people that are making a big noise about right. it and you know you get clicks on it you yep. know you get views on it it's an easy topic to talk about it's a hot topic in the grand scheme of things I don't think the vast majority of bass anglers give a damn about it. Most of them have already converted to it. And just like there were guys who would go side image all a practice and then fish in the tournament, there's guys who are going to scope and there's guys who are not. And the vast majority of anglers don't care. 
I think so, I think that's very accurate, Matthew. So when we were bringing it up, because we did, you there were some posts you made and stuff, but it was more that was fueled by the older guys on tour when Bass started asking questions. And and then once Bass kind of did their thing, got all everyone's opinion, mm-hmm. and then they made their role, then it just died. It was like, okay. Yeah. Let's so has anybody on. asked Klon or Fritz? On what it was like when they went from paper graphs to flashers. Right, no. Or has anybody asked yeah. the right. that next generation on what it was like when yeah. they went from flashers to 2D and then 2D to side imaging yeah. and then side imaging to de- like go back and ask like how I mean, just because social media wasn't there doesn't yeah. mean that those guys weren't pissed. I know for Kitchen a fact yeah. that Harold Allen was super pissed when they came out with GPS tracking because that guy spent his his whole life on the north end of Toledo Bend triangulating humps that he'd found on a damn paper graph. True. And now he's like, these young whippersnappers, they just drive out there and they hit a button and they can go right back to that same tree in the forest. Yeah, it's true. Like, I know he was bitter about that in 2012. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Absolutely true. So we're, yeah, so, yeah. (laughs) So Matt says, FF. S is here to stay. Yep. There'll be a few restrictions, maybe like inches yep. or transducers. I think number of transducers, and there might be a restriction I on the power of the transducer. I was never against, like, I was number four banning it, even though I think, like, it's some of the guys, like, if it wasn't in existence, they would suck. But I was never for banning it. But I do get the side of we're out pricing, like, allowing people to put four graphs and here's the thing and this is what i'll say i know you're like whatever if you can do it if you can't whatever but in saying that even nascars had to make changes where the cars don't cost as much and the teams the that they bring don't cost as much so other people can compete and i think that 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 that's a fair thing that we need to keep it somewhat of an even playing field so that we keep the talent that needs to be here here. That's a fair statement. Oh, look at that! <laughs> now we need to cut it. Hey, yeah, yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. Well, with that note, uh, I guess the only other question I have: um, Do you see within the next five years? And you're very wise to this sport. Do you see in the next five years we will all? And I'm asking this because I've heard from various anglers at towards the top that we're all going to be fishing under one umbrella. Do you see that happening in the next five years? 2028? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who do you think buys what? I think it's a live PGA deal. Yeah. Yeah. Like like Anderson's. If you don't count, like it would not. uh, Okay. The MPFL to me is the cat with nine lives and they've used three of them so far. So in (laughs) five years, they'll still have a life left. Good so point. if you want to count MPFL as one, they'll still be around. <laughs> they'll be on their last yeah, life, but good they'll point. be around. But do, I think. Do you think that though that that I'm not trying to knock them, love what they're doing, but there's no qualifying structure there or anything like that's okay. I, they're going to have more names that come in this year to make money. They're giving out a hundred thousand right. dollars. They have a strong financial dude, backing. Patrick Walter set injuries. a heck of an example, didn't he? Yeah, dude. I saw what he made this year, and he didn't even fish all of them. And he he got fished fourth in AOI. He won two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and he insane. fished four tournaments but okay so then here's my question because my <laughs> my whole issue with mlf right bbt there's 12 days he, you said they got a good financial backer over there mpfl and mpfl so they bpt had cronky right and everyone was like oh la, 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 la. they and, did say and, that and i always said la, 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 la. <laughs> they did say that and, and, I, and uh. from day one i said look billionaires don't become billionaires because they want to run a charity case spending money mm-hmm. right so so also let's go back to the mpfl do you think if it's not turning a profit even if they have backers that they continue if Cronky fished the bpt and wanted to fish the bpt he would continue to back it i'll just say that (laughs) but (laughs) Cronky, Cronky's too worried about the st louis i know but that's if you're comparing that to the mpfl that's like comparing oh so he fishes the people behind i don't know i don't know yeah. who the backer is. Okay, i'm, I'm just, just saying, using the cronky i'm just yeah, saying yeah. that's one of my most yeah. frustrating things in fishing is people talking about the people who have money who own these things they don't give a rip they do not want to lose money it's not charity all of us fishermen are not charity cases yep. no I they're here so. to yeah. make money yeah, I, I think there'll be a, uh, some sort of 
combination with the next. I don't. I think it'll be five years. Five years. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's because you all, you not only have to deal with that, you have to. Like, I'm not going to pretend like I know everything or yeah. all the stuff that's going on, but just kind of seeing both sides of it, you still have a lot of raw emotions from what went oh, down four yeah. years yeah, ago. And yep. there's a big difference between five years and 10 years. Yes. As yeah. far as letting water go under the bridge and some people moving sure. on and yep. letting go of different things. And yep. I right. think, you know, once once you get to that eight, nine, 10 years, you got enough guys. I know for a fact, I mean, I know for a fact, talking to some of the guys over there, you'll have enough guys that want to fish for Bassmaster Classic. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you're our age, if you're 30, even if you're 30 or younger, I mean, 25 even. Even, yeah. It's the classic. Yeah. And you can make all the money you want, but at some point that competitor that allowed you to reach that top level wants to be on that stage to win that Bassmaster Classic. And the only way is if that comes together. So you get some of the feelings out of the way. You get the desire to compete for that Bassmaster Classic. You get some minds in that agree financially that it makes sense, and I think it happens. Well, Matt, yeah, you said it all. You're very, very wise. It's great to have you as an asset, and definitely it's great to have you at text message length. Well, you say some outlandish things. Yeah, she does. No, I don't. (laughs) I'm the voice of reason. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's been great uh, watching you guys bicker back and forth and not through text messages, like I said, but... uh, it's good to have the the that know that inside. Um, you know, whenever you have a really good interview or whatever, we like to get the finer details, and and that's awesome. So, parting ways here, and you have your lovely girlfriend Courtney over there. Give us, don't give us fishing advice or crappie advice or how to run a podcast advice. <laughs> give us some good old relationship advice as we uh, as we say bye. Relationship yes, advice? You yes. said no hard questions. <laughs> no, it's just life advice. Uh, okay, life advice. Life yeah. advice. But uh, fi- figure out something that gives you a passion when you wake up in the morning, whether mm-hmm. it's that passion that allows you to go to your nine to five to do it, whether it's a passion that you can do it for a living, whether it's what you look forward to after work, but always have a, a reason or something to look forward to. When you stop having something to look forward to that's when change it up you start like wondering why the hell you're here yep yeah and as long as you have that something to look forward to and it doesn't matter what it is how dumb it is how outlandish it is i mean this is fishing which is incredibly outlandish when you think about the finer points of fishing yeah like 99 percent of the population look at this and go this is freaking insane yeah and it exists in all different other subcultures but all those people have found that one thing that makes them tick uh and and that's when you'll wake up and you'll be 10 years down the road and you'll be like dude i've had a i've had a good time and then you have that to look forward to so i guess yeah. that's my piece of advice awesome well that's good stuff thank you guys for hanging out courtney was a real champ sitting there watching uh watching your boyfriend argue with my wife charles <laughs> good job tonight thank you guys uh for hanging out with us matt Thanks, you bro. crushed it as always and the next time we hang out we'll probably be on btl again yeah thank you dude